If you are deaf or hard of hearing, you have a right to clear, effective communication when you talk with lawyers or when you are in court. What is effective communication? Communication that is clear enough to you so you can get the same information that hearing people get. Clear communication for all important conversations when you are with attorneys or in court. Examples of important conversations include talking to a lawyer about your case, either in the courtroom, one-on-one, -on -one, or outside the courtroom, understanding what is said in the courtroom, especially if you are one of the people directly involved in the case you filed the case, or you are the defendant in a case, or you were the victim of a crime, or you are a friend or relative who is there to support a person directly involved in the case. Answering questions in court, or signing any papers. Courts and lawyers are responsible for making communication more clear. They can do this by using court certified interpreters in court, using regularly certified interpreters for meetings with attorneys outside of court, using a team of deaf and hearing interpreters who are both certified. All interpreters must be PA state registered. Using Remote video interpreters, BRI, if an in-person interpreter is not available. If you do not know sign language, using communication access real-time translation, known as CART, or real-time captioning, a service in which a person uses a special machine to type everything that is said on a computer so you can read what others are saying. Using assistive listening devices, that make it easier for you to hear what other people are saying. but they do not have to give you personal hearing aids. You can ask the lawyer to have a meeting in a room that is quiet and that does not have a lot of background noise. And ask them to speak to you slowly and clearly and to talk to you face to face rather than looking at a computer or papers. You have a right to talk privately with your attorney without anyone seeing or hearing what you say to your lawyer or what the lawyer says to you.
How do you get an interpreter or other help with communication in court? If you have a lawyer, the lawyer must tell the court what you need for effective communication. You should tell your lawyer if you need an interpreter, CART services, assistive listening devices, written communication, or lip reading. If you do not have a lawyer, you need to tell the court yourself. Tell the court if you need an interpreter, CART services, ALD, written communication, or lip reading. As soon as the judge or court administrators know that you are deaf or hard of hearing and need an interpreter, they are required to get a court certified interpreter for you. Or if they cannot find one, another qualified interpreter. If they know you need another kind of help like CART or an assistive listening device to communicate, they must give you the help you need. If you are scheduled for a court date, you need to inform either your attorney or the court of your communication needs. You should let them know early enough so that they have time to plan for your needs. It is important for you to add an explanation of the reasons why you need assistance for communication. If you rely on lip reading for clear communication, ask the lawyer to stand in good light, away from the windows, and not eat or drink while talking to you. Sometimes lawyers and courts do not know where to get the accommodations you need. If it would help, you can give them the contact information or business card in order for them to make the arrangements for you. The day before your meeting or court date, contact the lawyer's office and ask if the interpreter will be there or if they have the equipment that you asked for. If the lawyer did not make any plans for the accommodations you need, then you can ask if your meeting or court date could be scheduled for another time when you will have what is needed for clear communication during your meeting or court date. If there is no accommodation, no interpreter or captioner when you go to your meeting or to court, you can ask to be scheduled for another time or day when an interpreter or captioner can be there. When deciding what to do, it is important to think about the seriousness of your legal situation and what would be better for you and your family. If your child is in jail, you can tell the lawyer that you want to get your child out of jail, even if communication might not be clear. She might have to stay in jail for a longer period of time if you wait for better communication. But again, it's your choice whether to reschedule or to continue without having effective communication. But if you're involved in a trial or if you need to talk as a witness in court, you should tell your lawyer and the court they must reschedule the court to a day when the interpreter or other accommodations, captioner, assistive listening devices can also be in court. If you have to wait in court, tell the staff to come and get you when you are ready. Go to the desk where the staff sit and tell them or show them you are deaf or hard of hearing and that they cannot just call your name because you won't hear them. Ask for someone to come over to you and tap you on the shoulder. Make sure you understand everything that the court or lawyers give you in writing. If you do not understand something, be honest about this and tell the court or your lawyer. 
right away that you do not understand. It is your responsibility to ask for the information to be explained in a different way until you are able to understand it. The judge may ask if you understand something that is said in court. Never say you understand if you really do not understand. It is important for you to be honest about understanding. If you have a hard time understanding something, ask them to say it again in a different or simpler way until you can understand. If you are on the witness chair and someone is asking you a question you do not understand, tell them to ask the question again in a different or simpler way until you can understand. This is important to remember. Whether it be the judge or the attorney asking you questions, do not nod your head unless you really understand what the judge or other people say. Sometimes people nod to show that they are trying to understand and communicate. But the judge or attorney might think your nod means yes. Keep your head in a neutral position without nodding or shaking and use only signs or voice to say yes or no. Lawyers and courts must ask you for your opinion about what will help make communication clear. However, they don't always have to use what you request. If they find another way to communicate with you that you understand clearly, they can use this other way to communicate with you. However, if you try the help they offer and it does not work, you should let them know it is not working and you do not understand. The lawyer or judge should then give you the help that will make communication clear for you. If I, as a deaf or hard of hearing person, have a meeting one-on-one -on -one with my lawyer, I can bring a family member or friend to interpret for me. I make that decision. The lawyer cannot require me to use a family member or friend to interpret because I have a right to a private confidential conversation with my lawyer. My family doesn't need to know what's going on. I have the option of using a certified interpreter. If I was to go into court, I would not have a right to use a family member or friend as an interpreter. The court would need to use a certified interpreter. If the judge thinks you need an interpreter in court or captioning or some other way to make communication with you clear, and you do not want an interpreter or other help with communication, you can say no. But first, you must let the court give you an interpreter, captioner, or other help to communicate with you to make sure you understand your communication rights. In Pennsylvania, interpreters must be certified. As a deaf or hard of hearing person, you may encounter an interpreter who is very skilled and meets your needs for clear communication. You have a right to request that person to interpret for you, but you must first sign a waiver stating that you are willing to accept this interpreter even though they are not certified. As they are interpreting, you realize you do not understand what is being said. You then have the right to change your mind and ask for a certified interpreter. You will have to sign another form. These two forms are found on the internet at the Pennsylvania Office of the Deaf and Hard of Hearing, ODHH. 
go to the website and you can print out both forms. If you believe that the court or a lawyer has discriminated against you because you are deaf or hard of hearing, you can file a complaint in writing to the United States Department of Justice. The contact information is Another organization where you can make a complaint about discrimination by lawyers is the Pennsylvania Human Relations Commission, PHRC. The contact information If you need more information or need help, please contact the Intake Unit at the Disability Rights Network of Pennsylvania, DRN. Our phone number is 800-692-7443. Another option is TDD at 877-375-7139. Or you can email us at intake at drnpa.org. Website www.drnpa.org. The Disability Rights Network was set up to advance, protect, and advocate for human, civil, and legal rights for people with disabilities who live in Pennsylvania. Since our time and money is limited, the Disability Rights Network cannot help every individual who needs help with advocacy and legal problems. The Disability Rights Network picks the cases that have the best chance to help as many people with disabilities as possible throughout Pennsylvania. While we cannot help everyone, we do want to give everyone information and referral options. Important, these videos are for general information only. Just seeing these videos does not mean that the Disability Rights Network is your lawyer. Please understand, these videos are not the same thing as talking with a lawyer about your specific problem. This project is supported by a grant from the Pennsylvania Developmental Disabilities Council.